fall in Cincinnati, even though the Bearcats swept the regular season series. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Velocian. Sit back and relax. We should have a great day and evening of terrific college basketball tournament style. The league this year has been so balanced. Maybe that's the key. As we take a look at the bracket, you'll understand why some of the great schools that are involved. Memphis is waiting for the winner of this. They were the regular season uh, champions. Then St. Louis and Dayton. St. Louis very, very good this year and a lot to go to the NCAAs. Then Marquette, the host school, against always tough UAB. Now the surprise in this thing is the first round matchup. Four versus five. Here is Cincinnati. They're 19th in the Sagarin power rating, yet they're the fourth seed. DePaul, well, they're the winner of 17 games this year, and yet they are a fifth seed. Our announcers today, Tom Brenneman and David Kaplan, and gentlemen, maybe the most interesting stat of all is in the short existence of this league, Cincinnati has never lost a great Midwest tournament game. Exactly right, David. They're going for four straight Great Midwest Conference Tournament Championships. Bob Huggins' team, 22-10 and 10 in March since he took over. Yet here today, he faces a team he's knocked off eight straight times, Dave, in DePaul. What can the Blue Demons do to end that streak? Well, eight straight losses. DePaul has to come out today and say, we know we can beat Cincinnati. We've got to rebound, shoot the basketball, because the Bearcats dominate the glass. As far as DePaul is concerned, they're hoping a couple of seniors can lead the way, and certainly the top dog on their team and in the conference, Tommy Kleinschmidt. Yeah, Tommy Kleinschmidt is a big-time player. He'll be a first-round pick in the NBA. This guy can shoot it from deep at 33 at UC earlier in the year, but his running buddy Brandon Cole, 71% the last three games, he's going out in style. As far as Cincinnati is concerned, it's been a strange year. Ranked as high as 12th in the country now, out of the polls, and they're trying to reload and regroup for this NCAA tournament, because Bob Huggins says win or lose today, they're already in. Yeah, and they've got the old and the new of it. They've got a great, great player in Lizelle Durden who can really shoot the ball from way, way out. Won two games at the end in Wyoming and Minnesota. But Danny Fortson, a 6'7 freshman, rebounds, scores, should have been freshman of the year, according to many people. Well, when we come back, we'll have round one of the Power Bar Great Midwest Conference Tournament. Number four and number five, Cincinnati and DePaul up next. Today's Power Bar Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Opening round quarterfinal game, the fifth seed DePaul looking for its 18th win. Cincinnati going after one better than that. And our Huffy Sports starting lineup brought to you by Huffy Sports, a leader in portable home basketball systems. The DePaul Blue Demons up front, Will Macon. We told you the conference player of the year, Tommy Kleinschmidt. Brandon Cole, the senior, needs a big game. Joey Meyer, and this is 11th year at DePaul, 217 wins, 115 losses. Some have wondered if Meyer will be back next season coaching the Blue Demons. On the Cincinnati side, it'll be Curtis Bosick, the freshman. Dan hey, it'll be interesting. Now Bob Huggins, a fiery, intense competitor. He's hoping his team can find that same passion as the postseason arrives. Klein Schmidt, the player of the year in the league, and the Bearcats winning eight in a row have taken the overall series against DePaul. Wong and Bryant Bowden to tip it off. And we are underway at the Bradley Center. Klein Schmidt, the easy dude. It's a great start for DePaul because Cincinnati appeared tight at their practice this morning. DePaul wants to get off to a good start. UC needs to make a perimeter jump shot in the first couple minutes. And that means in particular Lizelle Durden who has struggled badly. Keith LeGree, the point guard. That's Curtis Bostic right wing. They're looking for Forson down low. There's Durden. Nearly threw it away. Shot clock down to 10. Fortune. There's that rebounding cap you talked about. Blue Demon ball. Well, that goes to Paul's way this time. But you look at Cincinnati there, they are so hungry on the glass, DePaul is going to have to do everything fundamentally sound in terms of boxing people out to get the job done. Long ball, and they tip it ahead to Cole, who draws a foul from Bostic. Dangerous pass, but Kleinschmidt, an alert play just to tip it to Brandon Cole. Well, those two guys have really played together a lot in the summertime as well as for four years here at DePaul. So these guys know each other's moves. That play you saw there out at DePaul, the long bomb pass, that's something they're going to do a lot of. And that does not make Bob Huggins happy because it means your guys were beaten down the floor. Brandon Cole, the senior out of Chicago Heights, an 85% free throw shooter and misses the first. Joey Myers watched Brandon Cole Scored a 23 points per game clip the last three times out. Missed them both. 
Wow, those are important free throws. Had a chance to get off to a real solid start. Going long off the front of the iron. Boy, DePaul looking to run big time here. Will Macon having a solid senior year after coming over from Southeastern Iowa Community College. DePaul wants to get the ball to Kleinschmidt a lot on curl cuts going into the lane so he can use his body. Kleinschmidt, and he'll be whistled for the offensive foul. Well, there's no question that was a charge. Kleinschmidt trying to take the ball inside, doesn't have the great quicks to blow by people, and that's just solid rotation defense. Come over and step in front and take the charge. Great play there by Fortson. 18.43 to go here in the opening half. DePaul an early 2-0 lead. Point guard has been a sore spot all year long for the Bearcats. Third and short. I think DePaul's going to want to do is look for Peter Patton on the perimeter. He leads the Great Midwest in three-point percentage, 56%. Schmidt posting up Bostic, couldn't get the roll, and Fortson lost it out of bounds. DePaul will get it back. But again, if you look, Tommy, white shirts are all in position to box out, to go to the glass hard. That's the one thing about UC. They may struggle from the perimeter, they may turn it over a little bit, but they take care of the ball when it's on the glass. Cincinnati 0 for its first four from the field. There's a big body of Bowden. Not there. Strong rebound underneath. Make it. And then a reach and foul will go against Keith Legree. Good board work that time yeah. by making it vote. That's a huge series for DePaul because they can now take from that and say, you know what, we can rebound with these guys if we'll work a little bit harder to be able to get position, fight, and go up strong. And DePaul didn't put the ball back down in the floor when there was a guard there to try and dig down and make a steal. That's why they got a foul situation created. Well, they actually called the foul on Curtis Bostic, so that's his second. And he leaves the game in favor of Keith Greger. And now Fortson whistled for a foul underneath. That's a great call because the official appeared to be screened, but Fortson was holding by the jersey. Cincinnati tries to get away with what they can, and I, I commend him for that. It's a great, great defensive series if you don't get caught. Where Kleinschmidt off the double screen. Good feed to Bowden who walked. Or did he? Oh, they're going to call a foul against Cincinnati. Already four team fouls against the Bearcats here in the first two minutes of the game. Boy, DePaul is attacking the basket. That was something they didn't do in the second half a week ago against St. Louis. They didn't attack the basket, and that's why they had problems. They are doing a real good job attacking the basket, looking for scoring opportunities. Now they got to knock the free throws down. Ryan Bowden to the line, a native Buckeye. And DePaul 0 for 3 from the strike. That is not the type of start you need because free throws become a rhythm thing. They become a confidence thing. You breathe confidence in your other players. If certain guys start making free throws, other guys start making free throws. 0 for 3, not a good start. 0 for 4. DePaul missing a chance to jump out to a 6-0 lead. Instead, it's 2-0 and better than two minutes have passed. Bodja Greger checking in for the first time. There's Fortson. Bodies all over the place and a late whistle. A foul against Peter Patton. Well, Peter says something to Steve Wellmer. And I'll tell you what the beauty of tournament play at the level like this is. You get the best officials in the country as we take a look. There's the entry pass. Now Fortson says one thing on his mind. He wants to score. Possibly could have had a jump ball situation. Ball gets loose. DePaul's yelling for the travel. They get the foul on Patton digging down, but DePaul has to do more of that. Legree, a rare outside chance, and you see why, making a rebound. Cincinnati, 0 for its first five from the field. Brandon Cole beats Durden off the dribble and then throws up an air ball. Cole historically has had terrible games against Cincinnati. Because Cincinnati's a very good defensive team. They really guard you. That's how they get things started at the offensive end. But Brandon Cole doesn't respond well sometimes when defenders are physical with him. He's going to have to come ready to play today if they want to win. Lizelle Durden draining the three. He has been ice cold the last two and a half weeks of the season. Thus, the Bearcats losers recently. Odin looking for Kleinschmidt coming off the screen and just 
threw over Danny Fortson with the elbow. Well, I'll tell you what, the pole is so thin inside, they have got to be smarter than that. Here's the entry pass now out high to Bowden. Now let's see if it was a foul. He clears his elbows. That's a great acting job. Academy Award, <laughs> Danny Fortson. Joey Myers Club coming in 17 and 9. And Cap, uh, you figure they get a win here tonight, tomorrow against Memphis, the number one seed, and perhaps DePaul could land in the NCAA tournament. And Durden misses a wide open three. Damon Flint has checked in at point guard for Cincinnati. Oh. Offensive foul against Kleinschmidt. He can't believe it. That's his second, and if he's in foul trouble, DePaul's in big trouble. Well, we'll take a look, and you be the official. Here comes Kleinschmidt, and that's a terrible call. Two calls now in a row have gone against DePaul. There is no way Gregor had his feet set. No way. Well, you know, technically, Dave, that's not the rule. You don't have to have your feet set. No, but you do have to have squared up position on right. your defender. Right. But I think sometimes, you know, we hear people talk about that, and I've been right. guilty of making that mistake. Flint looked for to post inside, and Fortson missed the jumper. DePaul forcing the Bearcats to shoot from outside. Ryan Curry looking for help. And then had it stripped away by Gregor. Great defense. Beautiful job by Cincinnati to double the post. Durden will try another three. He has all six of Cincinnati's points. That's what Bob Huggins wants, to get his senior shooter hot. Patton to the basket. Offensive foul. Third straight time down the floor. The Demons have been whistled for an offensive foul, and Joey Meyer is livid. He is irate, and he's going to be very close. In fact, he's out of the box right now. He is going to get, be very close to a technical foul. Well, we have a timeout on the floor. Joey Meyer enraged at the men. In the black and white, his team down four early on. There are no medals for being the shoulder to cry on. Gregor, but no box out from DePaul, and you know the best rebounding team in the league and one of the best in the country because Bob Huggins' guys go to the glass with a vengeance. They clean up the mistakes and they're going to the line. There's Bearcat team, in fact, Dave, ninth in the NCAA in average rebound margin. Long, the junior college transfer, has had a solid season. 48 block shots, nine double-doubles. Averages 12 points and eight rebounds a game. He got them both. Cincinnati in front, 12 to five. They beat him down the floor, both plays in it. Well, that will not make Bob Huggins happy because his guys have a penchant for being very good at recognizing transition. They didn't do a good job getting back there. They dare to Gregor to shoot from the outside. Dumps it into Long. And Jacob follows with a deuce. Now when you're going to double the post and you don't have weak side help, you're in big trouble. I don't you like this Jermaine Watts. Yeah, he's a nice player. I don't know how he'll respond with the face mask. I broke his nose in practice this week. Freshman out of Tucson, Arizona. Bowden was fouled from behind. He'll go to the strike. Well, DePaul has got themselves in position now where they're going to have a chance to shoot a lot of free throws the rest of the way. They have got to step to the line and make free throws or they have no chance. They have to attack the basket. They have to box people out. It's a very easy game, basketball, when you do the fundamental things. Darnell Burton, Cincinnati's instant offense off the bench, checks in for the first time. Brandon Cole back for the Blue Demons alongside number 21, Marcus Singer. You look at a guy like Burton, he won both of the DePaul Cincinnati games, basically himself mm -hmm. coming in and bringing the Bearcats back from deficits. 11 in Chicago, 7 in the second half at UC. Darnell Burton scored 15 points in about 2 minutes and 30 seconds and won the game. You know, DePaul should have beaten Cincinnati twice this season, for sure once. And for sure once. They had him at the horizon let him wriggle off the hook. At UC, that's maybe the best environment in college basketball that I've been privileged to be a part of. It makes it very tough to win there. So Bowden finally cashes in on a free throw, his first in four tries, and it's 14-8 Bearcats. Well, they break the press, and it leads to that. Art Long, his first field goal. Well, when you're a pressing team, you're going to handle pressure well, and you can't press UC very often. Cole 
thought about it. He'll reload with Watts out top. Uh, Cole is such an important part of this team because he's quick and he can shoot it. But right now, I don't even know if he's hit iron yet. Singer can shoot it. You can't leave him alone. He was recruited to do one thing. He may not guard well, he may not rebound, but he can sure fill it up in a hurry. In that second game against Cincinnati, Singer poured in 13 points. 13 minutes to go in the opening half. It's 16-11, Bearcats. Fortson against Macon. And Danny Fortson, his first points of the game. Well, I love that kid, Fortson. What a prospect. Arguably the player of the year in terms of the freshman class. Goal tending it against Dart Long. It brought Bob Huggins to his feet. And you see, he's all over the official. Even if Bob believes in his heart that that's a goaltending, he's working the officials. He's a master at working the officials. Both these coaches are, and you see, and that's on the way down. It looked to be close. You agree? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still a five-point Bearcat lead. The ball dropping into his own this trip. Flint has struggled from the outside, but drains a three. That's Damon Flint with five. That's how you make, break up a zone big time. You make shots from the perimeter. Cole, a little head fake, pulls up and knocks it down. That's a big bucket for Brandon Cole, his first of the game. You know, when you're a shooter and you don't shoot the ball well early, he had two or three air balls, try and get yourself a closer shot so you get your rhythm and your confidence. You see the ball go through the rim, you start to visualize it more. Fortson and Macon really banging one another down low, and they got Danny Fortson. Yep, they used, got him for using his arm down to clear out and try and get position. That's two on him, but Bob Huggins had such a deep rotation inside, he'll go to Jackson Juleson if he has to. 21-15 Cincinnati, today's Power Bar Great Midwest Conference Tournament, brought to you by Power Bar, fuel for optimum performance. Well, we apologize. We understand now that was the seventh foul against the Bearcats, so they'll walk to the other end where Will Macon will go to the line. Wake Macon has not scored. He averages 10 a game and nine rebounds. You know, Will Macon is a huge baseball fan and is an acknowledged trivia expert around the DePaul campus. Well, maybe he'll come see us at Wrigley Field sometime this summer. Yeah, he's a big Cub fan. Nothing wrong with that. And I'll be out there, I'm sure, as you will. 21-15 Bearcats, 11.40 to play in the opening half from the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Durden, his third three of the game, and he buries it. Well, every time you creep close to a Cincinnati Bearcat team with great shooters, Van Exel, Durden, Darnell Burton, they can just stick the dagger in you real quick. Marcus Singer being guarded by Darnell Burton. Cole defended by Durden. Bowden working on Art Long, jump hook, in and out. And Singer follows and drew the foul against Darnell Burton. Boy, Bob Huggins is livid because Marcus Singer is not a rebounder and he should not be able to go into the forest and outwork guys for a rebound and there'll be another substitution. Bob Huggins gets guys in and out. You screw up, you're gonna find out quickly on the sidelines. And Burton will leave. Keith Greger checks back in for Cincinnati. Greger, one of four Cincinnati area high school players of the year on this Bearcat roster. And you know, when Keith Greger signed at UC, he was the biggest name recruit Bob Huggins had been able to attract early in his tenure at Cincinnati. Since then, he's gone out and gotten guys that are McDonald's and Parade All-Americans like Danny Fortson. But that was a big thing to get Keith Greger to believe in the Bob Huggins way of doing things. Yeah, and thereafter, out of Cincinnati, uh, Jacobs, and Damon Flint, and of course, uh, Bobby Brandon, the young freshman. We've not seen him today, and they're hot on the heels of a terrific young player named Ryan Fletcher, who is regarded by many the best high school player in Cincinnati this year. Singer knocks him in. 11-10 to go in the opening half. Cincinnati 24, DePaul 7. On tonight, the number two seed, St. Louis, will take on seven-seeded Dayton. And then in the nightcap, the hometown Marquette Golden Eagles entertaining the sixth seed, Gene Barto and the UAB Blazers. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. As you look at three-point field goals, DePaul one of two, Cincinnati four of seven. Durden has three of those four. Both teams at 50% shooting. Flint nearly traveled, and he did. 
Keep in mind, they play hockey in this arena. Sometimes moisture and condensation seeps up through a floor, and it can make it slick in certain spots. Well, this is a great facility, though, isn't it? Oh, beautiful, beautiful facility. Brandon Cole, short on the jumper, long the rebound, easy pass ahead to Flint. Oh. Tough dunk. Damon Flint, this kid can really play. At the point at 6'5", he can go to a small forward and shoot it, play the off guard, real quality player. Well, Flint has really struggled this season, as many of you know. Flint, a terrific freshman year, as Kleinschmidt has it rim out. Bowden, a strong rebound, and Long blocked it out of bounds. What a block by Art Long. Tommy Kleinschmidt, only two points in the game thus far. And he got those three seconds into the game been silent since then as you get him look. It's a clean look, that's what you want, clean looks. Bowden did a nice job on the glass. Look inside to Bowden again, and he threw it in above Art Law. Well, that's a tough shot with Art Law banging on you and knowing he's a shot blocker. Yeah, that's a tough shot. Bearcats lead by seven, you know we were talking about Damon Flint. He was hurt earlier this year after a great start to the season. Since then, he's been in and out of the lineup. But today, he already has seven points, although he missed that three. They made up their mind. They're going down to Bowden, David. Yes, they have got to establish themselves inside. Will make it in the pass off. It's going to get followed by Bobby Brandon. That's just a senior school and a young kid. He has a real quick first step. Will make it. Last year, many people felt he'd step in and be a real good addition to the ball, but had back surgery right before the season. There he's got Brandon beat, no question, and probably should have felt the contact and gone up for the shot so he could have gone to the line. Brian Curry checking back in for the Blue Demons and sitting down for a breather. Bryant Bowden, he's off to a good start today. He's very important against Louisville. A game DePaul had to win and got it done on national TV and a client has been four-point play late. Bryant Bowden had 22 and was really one of the key guys why DePaul won. We got one shot. We got one. Brian Curry with three. And now Will Macon, his first point of the game. And he's two out of three from the strike. 26 21, Cincinnati. They got clients been working Keith Legree. So it takes him out away from the basket in foul situations. But certainly Legree, a tougher kid. Take away by Patton. It'll lead to a deuce for Klein Schmidt. Well, there you get the press situation. You don't expect DePaul to be the pressing team, but they're getting it done here, trying to get a little run, establish the tempo in their favor. Got that Bearcat lead down to three. It was nine a moment ago. Durden, four three-pointers in the game for the senior out of Toledo. Well, he's the guy that is the missing link. When Cincinnati doesn't play well, he doesn't shoot well. Near takeaway on a sloppy pass for Macon, but DePaul retains possession and Cole tries to answer. Legree had it, lost it, long the rebound. And Kleinschmidt took it away. Timeout, Bob Huggins, he's not happy. His team's out of sync right now. It's a four-point game, but Cincinnati's out of sync. Conference Player of the Year, he is by far an NBA player, and here you see the great steal, just takes it away from Art Long, who's doing a Magic Johnson impersonation, and Clyde Smith says, I'm taking this one right to the glass and scoring it. He's starting to come alive, DePaul's starting to percolate, Cincinnati's out of sync, so the Lieutenant General Bob Huggins says, give me a timeout and let me get my guys regrouped. Well, you see the turnover situation, really not a big factor so far. Damon Flynn has checked back in at point guard for Cincinnati. Look at fast break points. You'd expect it to be the total opposite, but DePaul doing a good job in transition. Long nearly threw it away. He's struggling with his passing right now. He's more of a get on the block, get down where you belong, and rebound and score down there. Well, there's a hot hand for Cincinnati. Pardon me, David. He has 12. Bobby Brandon missed, got it back. He'll try it again, and the freshman gets his first basket of the game. Boy, Bob Huggins thinks a great deal of this Moeller High School grad. Thinks his future quite bright. Yeah, he's a tough, solid kid. Really knows how to play the game. Oh, what a feed by Klein Schmidt, and Curry wasn't ready. Flint right 
made by Patton. Hart Long with jumper. Not there. Long off to a slow start. Cincinnati's given the ball every opportunity to hang around in this game when they had a chance with the seven point lead in the ball to really get a little working margin going. Curry double team, fights through it, and the hook goes down for Brian Curry. Well, DePaul seems a little quicker to the ball right now, a little spring in their step, like they're saying, you know what, we've lost eight straight, let's just go out and play. And that's basically what you've got to do when you've been beaten so badly eight straight times. Cincinnati has knocked DePaul out of the Great Midwest Conference Tournament each of the last two years. Kleinschmidt a rebound off the Durden miss. And DePaul a chance now to get that Bearcat lead down to two, or even one, should they hit a long one. Now, Tommy loves to go to the point forward spot. Like Paul Pressey revolutionized with the Bucks. he loves that ball in his hands where he can create pass. He's such a good passer. Greger defended him well there, and Kleinschmidt comes up short. Cole lost it out of bounds. Well, when Kleinschmidt scored 33 in that game against Cincinnati, he did not have a field goal in the entire second half. And Gregor was a man who defended him most, or one field goal, rather, defended him most of that final 20 minutes. You know, in the first half, Kleinschmidt got on a roll in that game at UC January 21st, had 15 straight points, had a four-point play like the one he won the Louisville game with, and Bob Huggins made an adjustment and put Gregor on him in the second half and shut him down. Singer and Bowden return for DePaul. John Jacobs and Darnell Burton back in for the Bearcats. Flint just threw it up there. Jacobs had it, lost it, and look at Will make it. Well, he is an animal today on the glass. He knows that he's outsized, but he's really playing with heart right now. Bowden, great body position on Jacobs, and he drew the foul. Jacobs with three fouls off the Cincinnati bench. And that is the 10th team foul against the Bearcats over the final 6.27 of the half. DePaul in the double bonus. When we look at DePaul, they are only at six fouls right now. The key we talked about early in the game was get DePaul's big guys a couple fouls early because that limits Joey's rotation. Kleinschmidt, to his credit, playing with two fouls, two offensive fouls, has really started to tone his game down around the basket so he doesn't get himself in foul trouble. And, of course, Cincinnati's touted freshman, Danny Fortson, has been on the bench for the last seven, eight minutes. He drew two early fouls. He is such a solid player. He will go down maybe as the all-time leading scorer in UC history because he's a guy that pledges to stay, or maybe the second leading scorer, yeah. pledges to stay four years. And if you average numbers like he has as a freshman 17 points, he's going to put some big-time numbers up. It is scary to think the number is thrown on the board by the Big O, Oscar Robertson. I can't forget the Big O. He was, I believe, second all-time NCAA history behind only Pistol Pete Maravich. Burton pulls up and drains a jumper. Darnell Burton, who averages 12 a game his first basket. So many weapons that can hurt you from inside and outside. Very good basketball team. But Dave, you pointed out. They look like a Final Four team when they shoot the ball, and they look like a team that shouldn't belong in the tournament when they not shoot. Yeah, you put it perfectly. When they don't make shots, they're a very beatable basketball team. And you brought that up at the top of the telecast. The Bearcats struggling offensively down the stretch. Burton, he can put it up. Boy, he is so tough. 15 points in one stretch in that game at UC, and that's why UC came back and won. Klein Schmidt in and out, Burton a rebound, nearly knocked out of bounds by his teammate Bobby Brannon. Bearcats have stretched the lead to seven. And now the Bearcat faithful, some 3,000 have made the trip north to Cincinnati, sensing a widening margin here at the Bradley Center. Gregor off the glass, and well, Gregor with four. What body control by Gregor. He's not known as a scorer, but did a great job hanging in the air, getting it on the glass, and scoring it. Bearcats have beefed up the lead to nine. And they forced another turnover. Flint, one man to beat. Oh, what a move by Flint. Oh, goodness. Well, Joey better get a timeout. He's down 11, and it's starting to get away from him. The last timeout we saw was Bob Huggins taking it. His guys regroup. Now Joey has to have it. 39-28, Bearcats over Blue Demons. It's a team. Here he's trying to create something. Gets it knocked away by Flint. Singer can't control it, and they know right away at Cincinnati, you look down the court for the first option, Damon Flint. You talk about a big-time offensive move. That kid, it was a McDonald All-American. You see him pump his hand, he's excited. McDonald Parade All-American, and he earned those accolades because he's a big-time player. 
Well, it's 39-28. You see the Bearcats on this 8-0 run to extend the lead to 11. And DePaul certainly hoping to get closer than that before the intermission. 4.45 to go until halftime. Make it strong move to the hoop. And how did that go in? Well, I don't know. That was one of those shots you try and horse. I'm going to hang in the air for as long as I can and throw it up as high as I can, and it goes. DePaul now three of their last eight to quell an 8 nothing UC run in a minute 34. Damon Flint, certainly the difference thus far for the Bearcats. There's a silly reach-in foul against Marcus Singer, his first at Team 7. But Damon Flint told the story earlier. Injured all season long after a dynamite freshman year, and Bob Huggins just keeps waiting and waiting because many believe he's a future NBA player. Yeah, coming out of high school, he was one of those guys that you looked at the list, and whether they're right or wrong, he was a top 25 high school player on many of those lists, and he's a guy that at 6'5 gives you great athleticism. He can shoot the ball, he can run the point, he can play anywhere. And they've asked him to play point guard, Cappy, despite the fact that he is not a point guard by trade. They went into this season figuring Legree would be the point guard and Flint could play the three spot. But then he got hurt. He came back and they needed a point guard, so back there he went. Yeah, Keith Legree's a guy that struggled. He's not a good shooter. DePaul backs off him when he's in the game, as does every UC opponent, and he's had too many turnovers this year. One game, he had nine. 41-30, Bearcats. Singer thought about the three. No call. There was contact there, and Cole asking the official, where is the whistle? Well, he double clutched in the air, felt the contact, thought, okay, I'm going to the line, threw it up, gets the hoop, but doesn't get the call. Bostic working on making down low. Great cut to the bucket by Burton. Great Burton job. Six. Beat Jermaine Watts to the basket. And that was a beautiful cut. Cole so quick off the dribble. Extremely quick. Very good range on his shot. Very good range. Left alone is Watts. And he threw it right into the hands. No, they're going to say Bostic kicked it before he caught it. And Bob Huggins saying, how can the official behind Curtis Bostic make that call rather than the official standing right next to him. <laughs> That's a very good point, Bob. He's something else, isn't he, he Bob Huggins? is very interesting to talk to. You talk about a quality guy. Got two quality coaches here. Oh, yeah. Great people. 43-32 Bearcats were at the 315 mark in the opening half. Set up the double screen for Cole. And Watts just not going to take the shot. With that face mask, he just seems to have lost all his confidence on his shot. And Kleinschmidt has been short on just about everything thus far here in the first half. Flint leads the charge. Durden will spot up for three. His fourth make it now fifth three-pointer in the first half. Tipped up and then over the back is Bowden and that'll be his second foul. Well, things are really starting to go awry now for DePaul. Kleinschmidt took too quick a shot there. He starts to see that it's slipping away from a team that they haven't beaten since Joey Meyer, as he said, was in diapers. Bowden got away with one tip. It didn't go and there was no doubt he was over the top. I want to remind you this is a copyrighted presentation of Creative Sports Incorporated. Any unauthorized use without prior written consent of Creative Sports and the Great Midwest Conference is strictly prohibited. Tommy Kleinschmidt has missed his last four shots. The conference's leading score only with six in the game so far. And Cincinnati looking now to extend the lead to 15. But won't do it. See, DePaul's mistake was they didn't really look for Kleinschmidt on post-ups because he had a couple of fouls and it got them out of their rhythm. They're so used to him being the go-to guy. Foul underneath, going to go against Art Long. And for Long, that'll be his first. And if you're Bob Huggins, well, you have to be saying we're beating DePaul by 14 points. And Danny Fortson, arguably the Bearcats' best player, two points, has been on the bench almost the entire half. Right, and you also have to look at it from Bob Huggins' perspective and say we can't let Kleinschmidt start getting going. He is the conference's best player. He had 33 at UC. We've got to make sure we continue to know where he is at all times because he can explode for those 15, 17-point runs, and right away you're back in a ballgame. 
Boy, DePaul has been miserable from the line. 7 of 15. And now 7 of 16. I think he chipped the backboard on that one. And Bostic took it away. Got to protect the ball. Cincinnati is not a passive team. There are passive teams that have great players and they just guard you. They just do their responsibility. Cincinnati is an aggressive team. When that ball is gotten by the DePaul Blue Demons, the UC Bearcats are like sharks on blood. They're going at it. Burton will just pull up. And it's too strong. Patton with a rebound. Bob Huggins all over Darnell Burton for that shot. Hole at the other end. It's not there. Schmidt and low to Bowden. Left hand hook. Ryan Bowden. Ryan Bowden. He's their best offensive weapon right now. They need to start coming down and looking for him in a two man game with either Cole or Klein Schmidt because that gives you the perimeter aspect and it gives you the big horse down low. Bowden has eight. Lagree replacing Flynn at the point position. And they'll just leave him alone out there. You know, with this setup, the Paul is allowing two guys to just stand out there uncontested, and they're saying we're going to defend three guys. Legree's not shooting the ball, nor is Boston. Boy, Kleinschmidt, most fortunate he was not given his third foul. Oh, great head fake, and drains a jump. Boy, did he control the tempo on that one. He saw the defender flying at him, the good head fake, under control, though, and knew as soon as I get by him, I'm shooting it. DePaul, a mini 4-0 run to get it down to 10 with a minute 10 left in a half. Defense! 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 Art Long better be very careful. He's using his arms in there a little bit too much. Long from 12. Short, got it back and laid it in. Wow, is that an athletic play. 6-10, catch it and lay it in with a finger roll. Mm -mm -mm. Bowden and Long really banging one another underneath. Patton. Gets off to Cole, who finds Kleinschmidt. And he finally gets a roll. Well, the lid is off now for Tommy in terms of a perimeter game. He was getting the layups going to the basket. He's got to feel in the second half, hey, I've got to still stay in my rhythm. They're only down 10 points. This is a ball game still. Cincinnati will hold for the final shot of the half. Now, if I'm Cincinnati, I attack Kleinschmidt off the dribble and see if he can get three fouls. Well, that last time down the floor, we mentioned Tommy caught a break. Bob Huggins all over the officials. Kleinschmidt would have been his third. Legree just beats him, and Macon reaches in for the foul. You call it, Dave. They went right after Kleinschmidt. Well, that one hurts, too, because Macon's one of your three rotation guys inside. He fouled out at UC. He's a guy that DePaul sorely can afford to lose, and they attacked Kleinschmidt. Macon came over on the double team with Legree being the shooter there. I probably would have backed up and said, you know what, go ahead and take mm -hmm. the shot. I would trade the two points if I'm Joey, knowing I'll walk in down 12 rather than the 10, then a foul on Will Macon. Legree only a 52% free throw shooter. His first point of the game. Nine Cincinnati Bearcats have scored here in the first half. Cole gets it off. Yes, it counts. Brandon Cole at the bucket. And that Hits is a big basket. Big basket because all of a sudden the momentum as you go in the locker room, that energizes you. You're fired up. Brandon Cole said, hey, I'm going to have some time to get down to court. Use the clock beautifully. That's a senior. He's been in the situation before. He lets it go. That one is as close as you can get to double zero on the scoreboard when he let it go. So the first half in the first game of round one from the Power Bar Great Midwest Conference Championships in the book. Cincinnati 50, DePaul 40, Dave Olosian up next. Yeah, life's competitive, all right. Win or lose, doesn't matter. It's how you look at the finish line. Get there first. Lewis said some older boys took him to the hoop. So I took him to the finish line. Get there first.
Top athletes eat Power Bars. Sports Energy Bars is fuel for optimum performance. Power Bars are real food made from the finest natural ingredients and packed with nutrients. In a Temple, Xavier and Tulane losses against North Carolina, Arkansas, Maryland. DePaul, meanwhile, 17 and 9, and still in search of truly a quality win. Yeah, the win over Louisville is great because perception sometimes becomes reality. They're a big name, they're a national powerhouse. This is not a great Louisville team. The quality wins to Paul let Riggle off the hook were the UC game in Chicago and at Texas when they had a seven point lead with a minute to go and lost in two overtimes. Cincinnati opens with Art Long, Danny Fortune, Curtis Bostic up front. They go with Durden and Legree in the backcourt. That's Legree, the penetration, pitches off to Fortune who had it blocked. And he threw it in the basket. Fortune goes to the line. And that brings a smile to the freshman out of Pittsburgh. Well, that's a real good start because as a freshman, sometimes a tournament play, your first opportunity to play in the postseason, you get a little nervous, you get some of the jitters. Well, that's the best way to get the jitters out. Score and go to the line and know, hey, I got my confidence going, I've got my blood flowing, and we're into the second half. 15 points a game for a freshman. That's big time. Fortune. Trying to convert on the three-point play, and it's in and out. Good play there by Will Macon. Coming into the game, Fortson only 27 behind the great D'Antonio Wingfield for the all-time UC freshman scoring record. Well, uh, Macon and Fortson both hit the deck underneath. DePaul opens with Macon, Bowden, Kleinschmidt up front. In the backcourt, Patton and Brandon Cole. Bowden, the left-hand jump hook, won't go. Well, he feels it and he wants the basketball, and you do see the little spring in his step. He hustles back down on defense. He's got a guy that has to have a big second half as well for DePaul. Durden for his sixth three-pointer. It's off the mark. And Bowden bounces it off Art Long's chest, and it belongs to the Blue Demons. Well, Art Long talking to Mark Masseri, one of the referees here. But there was no question that was a smart play by Brian Bowden. You know, you mentioned the name a moment ago, D'Antonio Wingfield, set the all-time freshman scoring record in Cincinnati history, then went to the NBA after one year. How good would this Bearcat team be had he returned? We may never have known how Fortson would have developed as a freshman if the Don had been here. So sometimes things have a way of working out, but you're right. Talent-wise, they'd be as talented a group of guys as any team in the country. Peter Patton from way downtown, NBA range air. Patton is first points of the game. Leading the great Midwest in three-point percentage at almost 56%. He's a guy that hasn't really had any looks at the basket. He converted from way out. Long will take the jumper. And it's in and out. There's Danny Fortson. Back up strong for the Duke. Well, already he has made himself more of a presence in the first two minutes than he did the entire first half. He's a guy that UC looks at big time. And you don't normally see quality ranked teams like UC looking at freshmen, but he's a heck of a player. Patton threw it away. And Legree leads the charge the other way. Boy, body sprawled all over the floor. Bostic, the turnaround jumper in the lane. He got it. The senior out of Brockton, Massachusetts, his first basket. Fortson a little banged up. Bob Huggins just yells out, play through it, Danny. Play through it. That's what freshmen have to do. Get their sea legs under Manoia. It's a little bump, a little bruise. You've got to play through that. 13-point Bearcat lead. And Kleinschmidt draws the foul. Bostic saying that was just good defense. Well, that's going to be a physical war in the second half between these two guys. Curtis Bostic lists among his diverse interests of reading and writing also martial arts. That helps on the defensive end of the floor. Third degree black belt is wow. one Curtis Bostic with that body he has. Kurt, I love you. Please walk with me down the dark alleys. <laughs> Looks like Hercules, that guy. Oh, he? man. He's the only human being alive born without any fat anywhere. Right. I've never seen a frame like that. Well, you're close. Yeah. <laughs> well, at the other end. It's a free throw. Yeah, it was last night, late. Right. <laughs> Weinschmidt had 19 free throw attempts against Cincinnati in the second game this season. Those are his first two trips to the line today. Damon Flynn back in there for the Bearcats. Will Macon, you can hear him. Derek goes, come on, shot. Come on, Art, shot. Art Long knows better. Fortune will pull up. And it's short and long. Got away with a push off and rammed it home. 
Big time use of the arm and the officials. I, I like officials to let you play, but they can't give you a decided advantage. Well, you called it. It's already a brutally rugged second half by both teams. Cincinnati back up 58-45. Cole chops into that. He's starting to get his shot a little bit. And now we've got an intentional foul called. Or do we? Or an official timeout. A little confusion here. We're going to get Fortson, I believe. And Steve Wellmer says right away to Fortson. We've got an intentional foul on... Oh, against Will Macon of DeVoe. Wow. And Danny Fortson jawing with the official, and the official saying, hey. I just gave you the call. All right. So Will Macon is charged with a foul. That'll be his second. And the team's second here in the half. Fortson 0 for 1 from the line. Danny Fortson, one of the most heavily recruited high school players in the country out of Shaler High School, just outside of Pittsburgh last season. He's a guy that every single school wanted. And Bob Huggins went into his home and said, you know what? Here's the deal. Do you want to be a Bearcat or don't you? Some guys are going to wait around, wait around, wait around. I'm telling you right now, you're our most important recruit. Do you want to come here or not, or I'll move on to somebody else? And he looked him in the eyes. And, I guess I do. Where do I sign? And he has made a great choice. Had a great, great start to his career. Uh, Curry and Fortson already exchanging elbows down on the block. Gurdon off the dribble, dumps it to Art Long. Well, that foul on Will Macon really could turn out to hurt because all of a sudden you go to a 15-point game. you got to keep Cincinnati within arm's reach if you're Joey Meyer or the thing gets out of control. You don't have another half to look forward to. 15-point lead, the largest of the game for Cincinnati. Schmidt threw Gregor to the deck and drains the three. Well, the officials have said, you know what, we're letting you play. They're letting both sides use elbows, arms. It's a wrestling match right now. foul will go against Danny Fortson at the other end and for Fortson that is his third boy that's a big foul because all of a sudden now Fortson knows one more and you really start to play cautiously now, they're gonna get him on the there's where you're gonna get him an elbow to the head of Curry that's a bad call Tommy you got to let him play you're gonna let him bang at both ends you got to let him continue to bang like that Boy, Kleinschmidt could easily have fouled out of this game. But he is the conference's player of the year, and they call Gregor on the bump at the other end. That's a good call. You cannot impede someone's progress. You cannot impede progress going to the basket, either as a ball handler or as a cutter. That's a good call by the officials. But the Fortson call, if you're going to allow bodies to bang, you can't selectively call fouls. There was no advantage-disadvantage situation. That's how you call it. Gregor getting his second foul, and the Bearcats their third of the half. Cole into Bowden. Contact, the foul against Long, and Bowden heads to the line. Boy, DePaul's starting to get a little run going to get their confidence, but they can't allow Cincinnati to keep spurting out 15, 16 point leads. There's the entry pass. You could tell DePaul talked at the half and said, hey, we have got to establish Bowden again inside. He does a nice job using his body, getting the shot, scoring it, and he's going to the line. Bowden now with 10 points in the game. He is two of six from the line. Danny Fortson having a seat, excuse me, Kathy, and John Jacobs replaces it. Normally, the DePaul bench, in terms of their bench personnel players, is very reserved. DePaul's up there excited. You see the one stuck in their seats. The Blue Demons within nine at 62-53. Top athletes eat power bars. Sports energy bars is fuel for optimal performance. Power bars are real food made for the finest. Back at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, opening round game of the Power Bar Great Midwest Conference Championships in Cincinnati, a nine point lead. Better than four minutes into the second half. Get a good look at the Lieutenant General, they like to call him. Bob Huggins. You talk about a quality coach. I had 
chance to talk with a couple NBA guys. He said, if there was a college coach you would select to go to the next level and coach the NBA, he said there were three guys that popped in their mind. Mike Krzyzewski, Roy Williams, and Bob Hunter. That's a heck of a compliment. See Cincinnati getting more opportunities, although DePaul is hanging in there. They could have rolled over and called it quits, falling behind by 15, but now a chance to draw within seven. And Cole nails a three. It's a wow. six-point game. Wow. Everybody looked at Kleinschmidt because DePaul was in the set where Kleinschmidt hits the top of his head. He gets the ball, and he runs the offense. And Cole said, wait a minute. You're going to go that way? I'm going to shoot the three, and he drained it. Darnell Burton set to check in for the Bearcats. Danny Fortson on the bench for the Bearcats. He only played seven minutes in the first half due to foul trouble. Shot clock at 10. Trying to post up Damon Flint on Peter Patton. Long from 17. Not there. And the rebound to Patton. The ball down by six. And they're looking for their main man, Clyde Schmidt. Off the screen. Nowhere close, and Bowden lost it out of bounds. Now, Bowden didn't have his feet under him, or he had a chance for an easy stick back. Get a look at Joey Meyer there. Quality, quality coach. That 15 point lead is now down to six. Game and DePaul's fans have made the trip up from Chicago a lot right behind us. Yes, very cyclical, the game of basketball. Run, run, run. Whoever gets the last run in a game like this that's now down to a six-point game will win the game. Well, again, they're posting up. Flint down low. Burton will take the jumper, and he's off the mark. Two on two, Curry and Kleinschmidt, and now they'll slow it down for Brandon Cole. Boy, Durden showing you real good depth perception. He knew that they were possibly going to run a screener play to get Cole a shot and did a good job avoiding it. Art Long is whistled for the foul. And that'll be his third. Well, the two post players in the game right now are Long and John Tiny Jacobs. They both have three. Fortson has three. And when you have three fouls, you start to play tentative because you know number four means, uh-oh, I'm in big trouble. I'm that close to sitting out the rest of the way. See the numbers on Kleinschmidt. He averages 21 points, nearly six rebounds, and four assists. He has just had a remarkable career, one of two players in DePaul history with more than 1,500 points, 500 rebounds, 300 assists. The other, Dave Corzine. Pretty good player yes, in his own was. right. Curry kept it alive, and DePaul gets a rebound. Well, DePaul, the team that said we got to stay close on the boards, and they're really starting to dominate the glass here. Patton plays the three. And you have all of a sudden got a three-point game. A 15-point Bearcats lead is now down to 62-59. What a comeback by the Demons, and Bob Huggins says timeout. 13-32 to go. The Bearcats on the ropes, leading by three. Look, looked like it might have been a three, but you check out the camera work because Patton has the foot on the line as he goes up. He only gets the deuce. The official's right on top of that call, right on top. Terrific work by our crew here at the Bradley Center. We have two more games still to come. There you see the three-point field goals. DePaul hitting three in the last three minutes and 28 seconds on this 12-2 run and DePaul warming up. Boy, are they starting to heat up. Six of eight, that's a great way to get started and get back in a ball game, start to get your confidence about you. Fortune has checked back in for Cincinnati. And he's working on Curry. Danny Fortson, the turnaround jumper, he has 10. Man, is he a quality player. You talk about designing a power forward at the college game that can play 94 feet. Just chisel Danny Fortson. Line Schmidt defended now by Darnell Burton. They traded off with Bostick and Gregor, and now it's Burton's turn. I don't think anybody wants that job. 
I don't know if that's a great matchup in terms of Cincinnati because Kleinschmidt's so strong, and right now his mindset seems to be is go to the basket. Cole hangs in the air and knocks in the jumper. What a game Brandon Cole is having. You know, Joey Meyer said he told Brandon Cole, Brandon, you've lost eight straight times in Cincinnati. There comes a point, it's your last shot, Adam, that you step up and you say, you know what? You're not going to beat me today. Brandon Cole with 15. Tom Jacobs just got away with an illegal screen. Boy, please, Brandon Cole out there. Brazil Durden, who had 17 points in the first half, has not scored here in nearly eight minutes of the second. And now the shot clock down to six. Way outside. And it's not there. Cole hustles for the rebound and saves it to Pack. Oh, what a great hustle play that was. Bowden ran over the defender, Fortson. No whistle. So they're letting them get after it here in the second half. Yep. Officials are going to say, you know what, you two guys, you decide it. You decide it. And Patton thought he had a clean block there. Instead, he's whistled for the foul. And for Peter Patton, that is his third foul. The team is third foul of the half. Interesting substitution there by Joey Meyer. He's going to go with making a curry inside, but the interesting part of it is Dwayne Austin, a seldom used ball player out of Chicago Gordon Tech, same school that produced Tommy Kleinschmidt. Dwayne Austin comes in, he's quick, he can handle the ball, not a very good shooter, but Joey probably feels, you know what, Jermaine Watts is really struggling with the face mask. I gotta get Brandon Cole and Peter Patton some time out. He's gonna give Dwayne Austin a chance to prove he belongs playing at this level. He's gonna say, you know what, here it is, son. I'm giving you your chance. You gotta step up and walk through the door. And Darnell Burton converting on both free throws. He has eight points, 66-61, Bearcats. Fortune the takeaway, sloppy yeah. pass by Kleinschmidt. And Fortune fouled from behind by Patton. That is Patton's fourth foul. Well, that's big, that's really big. And that really is gonna cause some problems. Bad decision by Tom Kleinschmidt. Picked up his dribble that you need your friend called the dribble. Fortson anticipates well. We told you he can play 94 feet and he just shows you. He defends, he runs the court, and he tries to finish at one end. Patton has to sit down now. That means Jermaine Watts with the face mask has to come back in. So now you have a freshman point guard in Watts and the off guard a sophomore Sheldon Hughes sophomore. And a small backcourt in Austin and Watts and a team that can press you as well as any team going. If I'm Joey Meyer, I've got to feel if I can go just a minute and a half as you look at the face mask there, and he's got his Breathe Right patch on, trying to get all the air he can in his lungs, but if I'm Joey Meyer, i got to feel, you know what, if I can just get a minute out of these two guys without the lead going from 6 to 12, I'll be okay. 67-61 Cincinnati. And they break the pressure. Good job by Watts. Brandon Cole, you called it, Cap, no longer than a minute, at least on the time clock. He's set to check back in. Good head fake by Maker. Feeds to Curry, and he'll go to the line. Now we go against Danny Ports in his fourth. That's big. That is big. But you look at the DePaul lineup. In that set, DePaul had nary a perimeter threat except for Kleinschmidt. He's way out on the court, handling the basketball. Then they put him down in a curl position down on the low post. DePaul did not have a shooting threat. Cincinnati probably would have been wise to try and back off and force him to kick to a perimeter shooter. Well, Bob Huggins is telling the official the foul should have been called on 55 and not 25. I think he's trying to get another official's attention to see if there'll be some kind of ruling as to that being called on Jacobs rather than Morrison, and that argument will fall on deaf ears. Well, Bob Huggins says it should have been on 55. Certainly he would like it to come on 55. Boy, the Bearcats front line, Cap, in big time foul trouble. Fortson yep. with four, Long with three, and Jacobs with three. We have the replay, we'll show it to you between free throws. We'll find out if Bob Huggins was just trying to help himself or if he really was accurate. Here's Will Macon, now he gets the dribble drive off the fake, and he, Bob Huggins probably has a legitimate case there. They may have called Fortson with the body, but John Jacobs was definitely the guy who went up for the block. Well, nonetheless, Fortson on the bench with 11-11 left to play in the game. DePaul hanging in there, trailing the Bearcats by five. Long loss of handle. 
Got it back, and then Curry took it away. Jermaine Watts to the bucket. Draws a foul from Jacob. That's his fourth. Wow. Cincinnati is in the same trouble DePaul was in at UC in January on the 21st when DePaul's front line was saddled with foul trouble the last 15 minutes of the game. Now you look at John Jacobs, he's got four fouls. Danny Fortson on the bench with four fouls, and Art Long with three, a shot blocker who knows, man, if I foul out of this game, we've really got problems. So you may see DePaul attack the glass more and attack the post position because Art Long may have to start thinking about not blocking shots. Remember the Bearcats led by 10 at halftime as Bostic limping had his leg wrapped over on the sideline, checks in for Jacob. You know, Bostic, for all his physical attributes, built like Hercules, as you call them, not a kid that plays well with pain. He's not known as one of those guys like Nick Van Exel who just said, you play hurt. There's a difference, Tommy. Kids don't understand it's between playing hurt and playing injured. When you're hurt, you can play. When you're injured, you can't. Well put. Jermaine Watts. Hits both chances from the line. It is a three-point Bearcat lead with 10.55 left. DePaul picking up defensively. And Flint nearly threw it away. Cincinnati doesn't seem to be in any type of rhythm offensively. All of a sudden you look up, the shot clock's down to 15 seconds, and they really haven't done much offensively yet. Shot clock now down to 12. And there's Flynn. They'll have to hurry. Bostic off the mark. Good defensive series here by the Demons. Boy, Cincinnati just doesn't look good right now. They have to start establishing themselves on the boards again. That's the one thing you know you can do is rebound and defend. They are not doing those things right now. However, it does make it tough, doesn't it, when you have your best big man sitting on the bench in foul trouble. Make it. Blew it in off the glass. Well, that's one of those ones where it just seems like divine intervention. Twice today, he's throwing it up. He's just throwing it up, and it's gone down for him on a tough bank shot. Lead down to one for Bob Huggins' team. Durden has not scored here in the second half after 17 first-half points. Went not there. Durden the rebound and put it back. Wow, out fought Jermaine Watts. The lead is back to three for the Bearcats. What a game here in our opener of a triple header. Gotta love this. This is what it's all about. March Madness is here. Well, that calendar turns, and so too does the intensity. Bowden working on Art Long, and he slapped it out of bounds. It's a gutsy play by Art Long. Took the words right out of my mouth. I'm telling you what, it doesn't matter if you get all leather. I know the Bearcat fans back there in the Queen City are saying, well, you got all ball. You got three fouls, and your other guys have four. That's risky. With nine minutes left. There's a three. It's a tie game. Brandon Cole. He is the man leading the Blue Demons today, not Tommy Kleinschmidt. Boy, well, you look at that DePaul bench. Cincinnati looks like a tomb on their bench. Nobody up. And everyone on the DePaul bench up big time. They're fired up. They're into it. Cole, 18 in the game, 4 of 4 in the second half. And off the mark is Darnell Burton. Cincinnati's out of sorts. They're not running an offense. It's different guys coming down and trying to take a shot from the perimeter, which DePaul's giving them. DePaul's only lead of the game, the first basket in the first seconds of the tip-off. And now they wow. win. Brian Boat, look at that DePaul bench. They smell NCAAs. They know guys like Clyde Smith, Cole, and Macon have no more future. It's over after this. DePaul down by 15 here in the second half has stormed back. And at the eight minute mark, the Blue Demons lead by two. Damon Flint, air ball. Burton will go to the line with a chance to give his team the lead. That's three on Brandon Cole, if that's who they call that on. Again, a mental lapse. Tommy, I can't harp on it enough. When Cincinnati takes a shot, their mindset is, it's gonna be missed, go to the glass. That's how you have to be a good rebounder. The shot went up, no matter who's taking it, you have to think it's gonna be missed. Brandon Cole went to sleep. 
Boy, Bob Huggins marching up and down that sideline, and he is doing everything he can to inspire his club. He has sent Danny Fortson back into the game with four fouls. At 7.49, that's a gutsy move. You look at free throws, DePaul 14 of 25, but they were 7 of 16 in the first half. They have nary a miss here in the second half. And Burton converts a three-point play. He has 11. What a game. 7.49 to play. Cincinnati 72, DePaul 71. 7.49 to play in the game. And the foul trouble deep for the Bearcats. Big time foul trouble, but I will tell you this, Tommy. You can set great screens, you can defend, you can rebound, you can make steals, you can pass the ball and be unselfish, but if you don't make shots, it means nothing. But you can miss every screen, not defend, and if you're shooting the ball well, it covers up a multitude of sins. DePaul, 77% here with 7.49 left. Second half shooting is unbelievable for DePaul. Mm. Brandon Cole certainly has been the man for DePaul here today. 18 points, two of five from three-point range. He has the basketball. And now dumps it off to Watts. He's given him some quality minutes with Peter Patton on the bench in foul trouble. Watts right by Flint. The dish and both in the game. Wow, DePaul is attacking the goal. They are just playing beautiful team basketball here. This is Watts coming out party because Joey Meyer apparently said at the half, you know what? Yeah, you got a face mask on. Yes, you got a broken nose. There's nothing you can do about it. Either sit there and don't play or come out here and give us some minutes. And that's what he's doing. Burton at the other end. And Durden comes up with a loose ball. Scramble here in front of us. And Flint comes away. Boy, body's all over. And Fortson underneath will finish. Wow. Is he getting physical? Whoa, right in front of us, you got guys hitting each other. It's, this is what it's all about. 6.45 to go. Cincinnati 74, DePaul 73, Kleinschmidt. That's a three. Well, DePaul gets a two-point lead now. We've been trading leads, the Blue Demons on their leader hitting a tray. Go up 76-74, 6.30 left. DePaul absolutely unconscious here in the second half. Buckle Shooting your, well over 75%. Buckle your seatbelt in, because this one's going to be fun. Keith Greger coming back in for UC and headed to the bench is Damon Flint. Greger is in there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to guard Tom Kleinschmidt. Burton. Taken away, and DePaul heads the other way with a two-point lead. What a game by Brandon Cole, and you can't forget Brian Boat. He has 15 points. Shot clock at 15, and Kleinschmidt loves this set because he loves to be the guy with the basketball in his hands running the show. Actually, now they've sent Gregor out to guard Brandon Cole. Kleinschmidt short, the shot clock will run out on the ball. Well, Kleinschmidt may have gotten away with yet another foul. There were two fouls in there. Kleinschmidt charged, yeah. and then he got whacked right. in the arm, and the officials seemed to say, you know what, we're not calling it. Well, Kleinschmidt, as you see the turnover story, remember, he had two fouls in the first six minutes of the game. He has not drawn his third foul yet. Correct. He definitely charged. Then he definitely got hit on the arm, and the officials didn't call either one. Well, they let him go. Let him play. Long and I works. like that. 5.40 left to go. DePaul, what? Courage by this Blue Demons team. Trailed by 15 here in the second half. Burton for the lead. An air ball. And Watts hustling gets it away for the Blue Demons. They're going to slow it down. That's smart discipline there because that's a turnover waiting to happen when you've got your 6'8", 260-pound post player trying to play Magic Johnson. Boy, Watts has had a nice game. Ryan Schmidt dumps it off to Bowden. DePaul's lead is four. Boy, that DePaul cheering contingent is up. The whole thing is standing. They are going wild. The only person sitting, Barbara Meyer, Joey's wife. Her heart's got to be going 100 miles a minute. Gurdon. And it goes the other way off the top of the backboard. Now she's up. I'll tell you what. 
Bob Huggins has got to feel right now. Tommy, we were at practice this morning. UC worked out that Paul didn't. Joey said it was too early. His guys needed to get their rest. Bob Huggins came out and had an intense practice. They didn't just shoot around. And his guys seemed a little tight at that time. Well, they have blown a 15-point lead here in the second half. DePaul has hit everything in sight, shooting well over 75% here in the second half. We're down under 430. Blind Schmidt looks down the boat and making the rebound. Watts pulls up. And he's short, long the rebound for the Bearcats. Watts should have pulled that back out. Either shoot it off the rebound or pull that back out because you're at four-minute mark right now and DePaul had a chance to run another 30 seconds or so off the clock. Fortson. And they dump it down to Art Long. Long from 15. They have had it partially blocked. Lost out of bounds. Cincinnati gets it back. A timeout on the floor. Joey Myers, DePaul Blue Demons, trying to make a run at a tournament bid, leading by four. Dave Kaplan back at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. DePaul trailed by 10 at halftime, 15 in the early minutes of the second half, now leading by four. Well, if you take a look at the battle inside, points-wise, Long and Fortson, 23 points between them. You see DePaul smoking 68%, Cincinnati only 38. But 23 points for the two bruisers up front for UC, 23 for DePaul, but rebounding 17-13 in DePaul's favor. Tommy, we talked in the beginning. DePaul had to at least be even on the boards. They're ahead. Will Macon pushes Fortson from behind. And that is just the sixth foul of the half against the Blue Demons. So Cincinnati will inbound. That's three on Will Macon. Brian Bowden only has two, so DePaul not right now in serious, serious foul trouble inside. Well, they had Fortson right under the basket, nearly missed him. And Fortson goes up with it, comes up short. Gregor, the stick back for the Bearcats. What oh, big rebound there. Just when you think maybe DePaul's gonna have a chance to get a bigger lead, UC does an excellent job. Art Long is called for his fourth foul of the game. Wow. And DePaul's going to the line with their money man, Tom Kleinschmidt. 325 left, you got a two point game. These free throws are huge, huge. So Kleinschmidt, who is a 77% free throw shooter, will head to the stripe. The one and one, that is the eight team foul against Cincinnati. And he knocks it down. You know what, Tommy, though? One thing that jumps into my mind, I look at Bob Huggins, and he does look like he's pretty calm and cool there. Joey Meyer, he's pacing the sidelines a little bit. Hug gets a drink. Hug said, yes, we're in. We're into the tournament. Joey knows he's got to win, so you got a team playing for their life in DePaul, knowing if we lose in the next 325, it's over. We don't go to the tournament. Hug knows Selection Sunday, he's sitting up in front of his TV, finding out who he's going to be preparing for. Durden looking for help. Long is there, and Durden will get it back. 310 to go. DePaul 80, Cincinnati 76. Durden nearly dribbled it out of bounds. Clock at seven. Fortson off the glass will go to the line. Fortson Boy, with big. 13. Or rather, I'm sorry. 15. That is huge. Brian Bowden looks and says, what did I do? What did I do? Contact in the post on a shooter is going to be called. Danny Fortson had two in the first half. He has 13 here in the second. That's a big free throw. Want to get off that odd tip. And he buries the foul shot. 80-79 to Paul in front, 2.55 to go. Timeout, timeout! And a timeout was called by Tommy Kleinschmidt. That's a money call by a sure senior. Was. That's a money call. He knew his pal Brandon Cole was in trouble. Boy, what a game we have. Don't you dare go away.
The first of three from here at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. And if the next two are like this one, we're going to have one oh, great man. day of college oh. hoops. Want to remind you, coming up at 6 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Eastern time, the number seven seed Dayton against the two seed Charlie Spoonhour, St. Louis Billikens. And then following that one, it'll be UAB and Gene Barto against the hometown Marquette Golden Eagles under head coach Mike Dean. Yeah, Mike in his first year here and his team struggled early. Last two months they've been probably been the best team in the great Midwest. And of course the winner of this one will go on to face the top seed Memphis tomorrow night in a semifinal matchup. 2.40 to go and DePaul leads by a point. DePaul missed Bowden inside. If they'd attacked the goal to score, they had a dunk there. Klein Schmidt to the bucket, long the rejection. And it's out of bounds, belongs to the Blue Demon. Schmidt in that situation should have given a jump stop, got long in the air with four fouls. Instead, he just tried to attack the basket. Jump stop there, let him go up in the air, then draw the contact. Klein Schmidt, he's fearless, so he wants it right back for three. He got mugged after that shot, and no call was made. Klein Schmidt, livid down here at the other end. Steve Wellmer, very, very good official, just says no call, no call. They're not going to decide the game in terms of the officials, and that's what I like. That's why you got a great crew here. Danny Fortune along the baseline, along the tip. They still battle, out of bounds, and oh, it will, let's see, still no sign. Now it's UC basketball. Well, these two teams getting after each other. Well, there goes Fortson. I mean, you talk about some bodies banging. That's Battle of the Bulge in there. Wow. Gregor will inbound. Burton there to receive it. Two minutes left. And a foul on Macon underneath. Boy, after all the banging. And then you have that call against Will Macon. That is his fourth. And Danny Fortson will head to the line for one and one. That's a big foul. That's four on Will Macon, the senior leader inside for DePaul in terms of their low post players. And we'll take a look. These two guys are banging. Will Macon frisking Fortson, making sure he's not packing a weapon. Two shots. <laughs> 80-79. And now the uh, official blows the whistle. And they'll converse about something here for a moment. Yeah, they just want to make sure it was a one and one. Making, uh, or making in that situation, just doing his job as a, a law-abiding citizen right here in the Bradley Center. Right. Each team with a timeout left. And both teams in the bonus. And Fortson has tied the game. Danny Fortson, two points. Played seven minutes in the very first half. He now has 17 points and five rebounds. We'll try to give his team the lead. And can't do it. Mark Long the rebound. And taken away by Bowden, and then he lost it out of bounds. When the crowd is all standing here, everybody's fired up for this one. Bear in mind, Cincinnati has never lost a game in the Great Midwest Conference Tournament. And Burton just missed a layup. What a break for the Blue Demons. The Bearcats have won three straight Great Midwest Conference Championships. Boy, Gregor's playing with a very, very bruised, swollen black eye. And he stripped that one, Lucy. You may remember Cap in the Maryland game, right. a two-point loss by the Bearcats a couple of weeks ago, had it split wide open, was bleeding all over the floor, had to get it stitched up. But being the tough kid that he is, the competitor, he comes right back, ready to play, practice the next day. Macon. Oh, there's Patton, they had him open, but Cole comes up short, got his own rebound, and kisses it in. Wow, 124 to go, and Brandon Cole, textbook the senior, follow your shot, gets himself a basket. You're sitting at home, you young basketball players, you've got to follow your shot. 
huge possession for Bob Huggins' team. And they find Durden for three. The senior gets a three-pointer, his sixth tray of the game. Now here comes the other senior, and you gotta take your head off to Durden. He was quiet for 17, 18, 19 minutes here in the second half, but he rises to the occasion. 52 seconds left, Cincinnati leads by one. Ryan Schmidt pulls up for three. Wow! Wow, wow! Do we have a ball game? 45 seconds left, and DePaul leads by two. Bob Huggins is not going to spend a timeout. He has one left. There is a nine-second differential shot clock, game clock. Jordan off the mark, and a foul is called against Kleinschmidt. So Gregor goes to the line. Now Kleinschmidt just over his average now, averages 21.3. Now here's the shot, Durden wants it. He feels it, he misses it. You can't really tell if Kleinschmidt fouled him or not, but when a body hits the floor like that, usually you're gonna see a call. So Gregor heads to the line with 28 ticks left. It's a 19 foul, so it still is just one in the bonus. Gregor from the line this season, a 61% shooter. He has not been there, however, today. Wow, Tommy Kleinschmidt, a huge shot. Gregor, short. Rebound to Paul. And a foul is called at the other end. It'll go against Lizelle Durden. And 23.4 seconds left. DePaul starts to smell the upset for them of the year. Oh, by far. They come in, they know they've lost eight straight to Bob Huggins, the Cincinnati Bearcats, and their guys took the court today and said, you know what? Hey, we gotta come out here and just say it's ours. We're gonna take it. DePaul has done that in the second half by making shots, rebounding, taking care of the basketball, and not being intimidated by a much more talented front line of Cincinnati, which really has dominated the glass in two prior meetings. Peter Patton, 71% from the line. He has not been there today. One and one. And he didn't get it. Out of bounds, Cincinnati ball. Huge misses by Gregor for the Bearcats. And now Patton, the junior for the Blue Demon. Well, Tommy, your point guard is recruited to do two things. If he scores, it's a bonus. It's take care of the basketball and make free throws at the end. That's a big, big miss by Pat. Cincinnati spends its final timeout. 21 seconds left. DePaul leading the Bearcats by two. Three. And our finish line game summary brought to you by Finish Line. Get there first. Well, you look at second chance, chance points, while DePaul is doing a great job on the boards, UC is converting on the offensive class. 23 second chance points, inside scoring, much closer than it's been in previous meetings, especially this season. Lizelle Durden, wow, six trays, only one though in the second half, and that's why DePaul's gotten back into it. There has not been a hot hand for UC, other than Fortson getting a few things done inside. Keith Legree is checked back in for Cincinnati. This is it. And they're looking down to their main man, Fortson, inside. Turn around, in, oh, out, up. and rolls in. Ten seconds left. Patton looks ahead. Nearly lost the ball and now calls timeout with six seconds left in the game. Well, if you're Joey Meyer, obviously everyone in the building thinks that Kleinschmidt is going to get the basketball. But you do have Peter Patton, who leads the GMC in three-point field goal percentage. You do have Brandon Cole, who's playing an excellent ball game. You know coming in, he shot 71% in the last three games, and he certainly played very well today. He is 9 of 15 from the floor, 2 of 6 from three-point range. He also has seven rebounds, four assists to go along with 20 points he's put up on the board. So you've got three options also knowing that if you get the shot fairly quickly, you're going to have a chance at a rebound. Now that all said, Tommy, the clock stops in the final minute of the ball game on shots that go through the basket. If you shoot too quickly and miss, you're going to give UC a chance to come back down. If they only make a two, UC has time to come back and get the three beat. 
Well, our power bar player of the game, Brandon Cole. He has struggled throughout his career against this swarming Bearcat defense, but today he has been spectacular. 20 points, seven rebounds for Brandon Cole, and he has four assists. Uh, if it's me, this is just me, and we'll take a look at some Brandon Cole highlights. This guy has played a whale of a ball game. There he goes with the tray. Misses it. This is the follow-up in the air. Doesn't come down and give a shot blocker or a defender a chance to come over and get him. Scores. That's a big, big basket. If it's me, I want to know that at worst case scenario, I'm going to overtime. I'm talking it from Joey Meyer's perspective. I'm going to get myself one crack to win it. If I don't make the shot, we're going to overtime. You can't leave time on the clock because the Bearcats can make it from 35 feet and out with guys like Flint, guys like Dirt, guys like Darnell Burton. They got shooters. And a three, if you score the deuce, sends you home an unhappy guy. Well, Bob Huggins has brought in all his top defenders for this final six seconds. He has Gregor in the game, Bostic back into the game. And DePaul will inbound, 85 apiece. Six seconds left to go here at the Bradley Center. Opening round game, the Power Bar Great Midwest Conference Tournament. Klein Schmidt, he's going to have to fire. Just throws it up. And it's off the mark to tip in. No, we go to overtime. Well, Brian Bowden almost had the follow. Look, you thought the clock was going to run out. And Bowden had a chance. He caught it, threw it up there and almost won the ball game. As you get a look, good job on the double. You got two guys making tough on Kleinschmidt. The shot goes up. It's way, way off. Bowden catches it. No question he got it off in time. Throws it up and just misses the DePaul bench. Dies on that one. They got to get ready. Cincinnati and DePaul headed for overtime. We'll be back with that right after this. West Conference Championships. And we're headed for overtime in game one. The number five seed, the Paul Blue Demons. Joey Meyer's team trying to get to that NCAA tournament. A win today, a quality win it would be, would put him at 18 and nine. Meanwhile, at the other end, Bob Huggins has gone on record as saying his team is in the NCAA tournament. Coming in with a number 19 rating in the Sagarin and 30th in the RPI. His team would go to 19 and 11 with a win. And the winner will advance to take on the top seed, Memphis, tomorrow night. Art Long and Brian Bowden to tip it off. Bowden has had a terrific game. And DePaul controls the tip. Klein, Schmidt, Bowden, Macon along the front line. Patton and Cole in the backcourt for the Demons. The Bearcats with Durden and Legree in the backcourt. Burton, Long, and Danny Fortune down low. Macon the jump hook. Not there, and he came over the back. He's gone. Fifth foul and a silly foul. Will Macon, the senior, should know known, better. Should have known better. That hurts the Paul big time because he's not only a good player, but he's an excellent passer. Macon will leave. See, he had six points, nine rebounds. And four assists Macon. for a center is pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. The Paul has been in overtime only once this season. It was a double overtime affair at Texas, down in Austin, January 26th. They blew a seven point lead in regulation with a minute to go and lost eventually in two overtimes, having chances to win at the end of the first overtime and regulation, losing 99-92. That loss sometimes may haunt a team when you get into the extra session. And Cincinnati, meanwhile, is fortune Hits the first point of the overtime, two overtime games, a win at Minnesota, 91-88, and then a loss at Memphis, 74-69. So one and one. Forza has had a huge second half. 20 points in the second half for Danny Forza. And now the overtime. Ryan Schmidt left alone. And a push will go against Darnell Burton. Now that's 10, so everything DePaul now does at the free throw line is an automatic two shots. Burton, his second foul. Kleinschmidt from the line is five of six. Tommy Kleinschmidt checked in for 22 points. He has four rebounds. And we mentioned five of six from the line. Tommy Kleinschmidt. The only DePaul player ever 
Top 10 in scoring, rebounds, assists, and steals. Got a chance to talk to a couple NBA guys when they were out to watch Tommy during the year. And they both, two guys I talked to, said, you know what, you win with guys like that. Too many people are caught up on athleticism. You gotta just have athletes. You got also basketball players that know how to play the game, and that's what he is. And a much bigger body than he looks like on television. Yep. 6'5", 210, 220 pounds. They're looking for Burton in the lane. And he's short with a shot. Burton got his own rebound. Went up. Had it blocked by both. And Huggins on the sideline is livid. Throws his cup of water down and is livid looking for a foul in there. Looked to be a very, very close call. Could have gone either way. So we're not going to call it. What pass it. Line Schmidt Cole and Bowden Easy Duke. 350 to go in overtime. Blue Demons 89, Bearcats 87. Man, this has been worth everything. We got two more to do yet. Cross court, Legree got fouled and goes to the line. That's a big, big move. Now you take a look at the passing of DePaul. Great effort there by the threesome of Kleinschmidt, Cole, and Bowden. You come to the other end. Keith Legree, not known as a scorer, goes in. No doubt about the foul. Takes it inside, gets banged to the floor, and scored. Real nice looking series there at both ends. Legree trying to give his team a lead. We're tied at 89. Mentioned Legree only a 53% free throw shooter. And he shows you why. Two of three today. Boy, that was ugly. We've got to play two more games here, Keith. Easy on the rims. 89 apiece. Klein Schmidt. Patton pulls up for the jumper. In out. Klein Schmidt tipped it in. Nice. Now it's Durden's turn. Now it's Durden's turn to come down. We're seeing all the prime town players come to life here today. And oh man. Klein Schmidt with 24. Cincinnati sets its offense. They like that matchup. Patton guarding Burton. They've gone there the last time or two down the floor. Legree to the basket. And Legree only averages six a game. Has hit the last four Cincinnati points. Well, he is a real good player with the ball in his hands. Not a jump shooter, but he's strong with the basketball. Kleinschmidt working off the screen for three. And it's off the iron, out of bounds. DePaul basketball. Big break for DePaul right there. Big, big break. Kleinschmidt has a tendency at times when he doesn't shoot it well, he falls off his shot rather than going up strong and coming down in the same spot where he left the floor. Well, they're going to call a push against Legree. And again, we are in the double bonus. Yes. Both ways. Everything now is two shots. Patton, who missed, without question, the single biggest free throw of this game in regulation. His team led by two. 20 seconds left. He was at the line. Missed the front end of a one-and-one, one, as he does the first of two here. And then Cincinnati came back down, tied the game on a Danny Fortson bucket, sending us to overtime. DePaul by one. Boy, this is like a prize fight, these two slugging it out. You know, it speaks volumes about a great league called the Great Midwest when these two are your fourth and fifth seats. Two excellent basketball players. And now DePaul in a zone defense, daring the Bearcats to work outside. And there's Burton, and they dump it into Fortune, who was fouled by Bowden. That's Bowden, four that's on four, him. Yeah. 19 in the ball game has really done yeoman work on the glass. Bryant Bowden, 19 points and nine rebounds to go along with an, a single assist. He's a guy not known as a passer, but I'll tell you what, if the ball comes in on the low post as a post player, you've got to be able to dish and find open men. Now here is a lineup, Cap. We have not seen Cincinnati use the entire season. They do not have one of their two point guards, Flint or Legree. On the floor, they bring in Gregor, who replaces Legree. Well, they're setting up for the defensive end, as Fortson has tied the game. Andy Fortson has been to the line 11 times and has made eight of them. 67% shooter at the line. 
And he got them both. Bearcats back in front. 93-92. And they break the pressure. Three on one. They spot up Cole for the three. Getting prime time play all over the place. You look at the DePaul bench and they are fired up. 23 points for Brandon Cole. You know what, Bob Huggins also sending a message to Keith Legree, Damon Flint, because they're not on the court. He's saying, you know what, I don't like how you play. And Brian Curry is called for the push underneath. So Danny Fortson will go back to the free throw line for two more. Bob Huggins is screaming, he wants an intentional foul call. Minute 47 to go, DePaul 95, Cincinnati 93. What a ball game. Shame that somebody is not going to go home with the winner here. And that team will literally go home. Right out of here. First flight or bus right out of Milwaukee. Fortune, a huge second half. He had two points after playing seven minutes in the first half due to foul trouble. Joey Meyer has since watched. Danny Fortune throw in 21 second half points. And now, oh, he missed it. And Bowden the rebound. And he is 10 of 14 at the line. Not bad shooting out of a freshman in a prime time pressure situation. That was his first miss from the line in overtime. DePaul by one. 135 left. Big series here for the Blue Demons offensively. Ryan Schmidt. Thinking about it. And we'll take it. In and out. Oh, tough break there for Klein Schmidt. Boy, that would have been huge. So now Cincinnati with a minute 11 left. A chance to recapture the lead. And Burton getting the chance out top. He is a quality player. I love this kid. They're looking for Fortune. I mean, that's the only place they're looking. Is Danny Fortune the freshman. And now Burton for three. Not there. Long lost it out of bounds. Bob Huggins all over Art Long saying, would you grab the basketball with two hands? Too many guys, Tommy. Grab with one hand. They want to be flashy. They want to just reach up and pluck it. Can't do that. 50 seconds remain. DePaul a one-point lead here in overtime. There is about almost an 18-second differential. Pull along the baseline. And he turned it over. Wow! Well, that was a Brandon Cole mistake there. He took the ball where he shouldn't have. You've got the lead in the ball. 28-7 left. 28.7. Bob Huggins says time. 95-94 DePaul in overtime. Final score. Athletes eat power bars. Sports energy bars is fuel for optimum performance. Power bars are real food made from the finest natural ingredients and packed with nutrients in a convenient low-fat snack. Now in six great flavors. If you need energy, get power bars. Well, you see the situation. DePaul one timeout left. The possession arrow in favor of the Bearcats. And both teams already well into the double bonus. 95-94. DePaul leading here in overtime. Game one of our triple header from the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. The power of our great Midwest Conference tournament. You know, many people have said to me that Bob Huggins has he abandoned his tradition of wearing the same outfit during a winning streak. Instead, now he gives the tie to Charity and they auction off after the ball game. And they made a lot of money for Charity on that. Big time, but he may need that lucky tie right now. Cincinnati with the ball, down a point. And Burton forced it up there, and they scramble for it. Jump ball, possession arrow gives it to the Bearcats. 
boy, oh boy, these two teams just banging on each other. Wow. The officials don't want it decided. They want to allow the players to win the game by themselves. There goes the ball up. Kleinschmidt looking for an over the back. Burton looking for a foul. And there is a foul against Brandon Cole. Wow. They don't call anything the contact between Kleinschmidt and Burton a second ago. And they make that call right there against Brandon Cole. Yep. There were two fouls the previous play. Burton probably got fouled by Kleinschmidt. Burton probably fouled Kleinschmidt on the rebound. You could have called either didn't. And now you've got a foul here. A ticky tack one out on the perimeter. Lazell Durden, two out of two from a line, 78% on the season. He is Cincinnati's second best free throw shooter after Darnell Burton. And now Joey Meyer will spend his final timeout here in overtime. Well, Cap, you have two free throws and the ball certainly more than enough time to set up for a shot. Of course, well, that's saying that Lazell Durden makes both free right. throws. He misses here, and the game looks pretty good for the Blue Demons. Well, with 13.4 left, the thing that would really concern me, I remember when I was coaching, I was coaching against DePaul. DePaul is down one. We have, they're at the line with four seconds left. They missed the free throw, Rod Strickland. Our guy doesn't box out. We knew DePaul was a much better rebounding team than we were at Northern Illinois, and Comagy's lays it in to beat us. So you take a look at that same situation. DePaul is the shorter team. Now, they're the Northern Illinois right here. You take a look at Cincinnati. They're that big, strong rebounding team. They know that they have got to put one in on stickback. And that if I'm DePaul, first thing i got to be thinking about is where's a body seal somebody off? Well, I want to remind you, later tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern time, it'll be our second game of the triple header. Dayton, the seventh seed, against Charlie Spoonauer, Erwin Plagick, St. Louis Billiken. And then we'll wrap it up. Marquette on their home floor. The third seed taking on Gene Barto and the UAB Blazers. Please check your local listings. <laughs> we have had a dandy here in the opening game of this triple header. DePaul with 13 seconds left, leading the Bearcats 95-94. Joey Meyer just spent his last time out. Rather than setting up for a shot, perhaps wanting to ice the shooter, Lazelle Dirt. Right, Joey likes, I've talked a little bit with him. Bob Huggins, I believe, is the same way in talking with him. They like that if they have to come down and get a basket and there's not much time left here at 13.4, rather than give the def defense a chance to set up a press or a trap situation, just push it, take it to the goal, and try and create something. Durden is a 78% free throw shooter. Huge shot here, although he does get two, and he knocks down the first one. Again, we remind you, both teams in the double bonus. So now this one for the lead. We're in overtime. Tied at 95. Meyer and Huggins will be worn out after this one, and Durden has given his team a lead. DePaul out of timeout. They're looking for Klein Schmidt. Now Cole, who fell down. Klein Schmidt with four seconds left along the baseline. Not there. Cole throws it up. Cincinnati has won 96-95, and the Bearcats remain unbeaten in three years in one game in great Midwest Conference tournament play. Boy, and take a look at the Bearcat fans. They are absolutely breathing a sigh of relief. Tom Kleinschmidt sitting on the court in the lane, absolutely stunned. Terrence Green, a former DePaul player, comes over, and there's the hand from one of the Bearcat players to Kleinschmidt saying, hey, you played a heck of a ball game. And look at all the Cincinnati players and uh, hugging Tom Kleinschmidt, knowing the last time after four years that this warrior from Chicago will play against Cincinnati, and, and that shows where the kind of respect you get in conference play, Dave, right there. Yep, you, you develop relationships, and you know that Tom Kleinschmidt may be the enemy, but he's certainly a fine basketball player, and these two teams have battled and waged some great fights. This one, probably the most classic fight of all, 96-95, Bearcats win it in overtime. Wow, what a game. Well, our Ameritech play of the game brought to you by Ameritech, your link to better communication. And this is the last 6.4 seconds of the game. DePaul gets the ball to their main man, Kleinschmidt. He gets Gregor in a situation. He goes up. You're never going to get a foul call. He misses the shot. Brandon Cole catches it. 
definitely lets it go in time, but to no avail. The Blue Demons fall 96-95, as you see Gregor ecstatic that Kleinschmidt's shot was not there. Boy, the courage of this DePaul team. Trailed by 15, rally back to overtime, but Cincinnati wins it. 96-95 for Dave Kaplan and our entire crew. We'll see you later tonight from... Almost 500 pounds of heavyweight.